So I follow the steps outlined on the TechWiz video to set up um, a headless installations for the Zero, which basically are uh, you first download the image for the light version of Raspbian from the Raspberry site, which is the stretch light. You can just download it as a zip file. Uh, then I um, use Etcher, which is this little piece of software right here, um, to deploy that image into the SD card. Uh, you will need a SD card reader for that and most likely an adapter. Uh, I happen to have that on my laptop. Uh, once I have that in place, I can put the SD card into the Zero and plug the Zero into the laptop or computer via USB. Make sure you use the, not the power, not the power port, but instead the actual USB port. That USB port will give power to the Zero, but also will allow you to SSH into the Zero. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, at that point, you want to install a piece of software that's called Putty. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, which is the, the, the piece of software we're going to use to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Zero, I'm sorry. In my case, I didn't actually need it to install Bonjour, which is what um, the guy here at the TechWiz, TechWiz video suggests. Uh, I didn't need that, so I skipped that. And, okay, so once you have it that plugged in, you allow it to boot uh, and wait until your computer finds a new Ethernet device. So, so at that point, you just wait. It's about couple of minutes, maybe two minutes, worst case scenario, depending on how fast your SD card is. And a new Ethernet device will show up on your list. Once that shows up there, that means you are actually able to connect um, to via SSH to your zero uh, via USB. At that point is where you want to fire up Putty. You can use raspberrypi.local um, as a host name and make sure you're on port 22. Once you have that set up, you click on open in a new console. I don't have mine plugged in right now, but a new console is going to show up. Uh, the default credentials for the zero and also for the, the other raspberries in general are username pi and password raspberry. Um, at that point, you will be able to log in into via SSH into your raspberry. Um, you want to follow the steps, as I said, that are uh, outlined on the video. Uh, mainly, you run a app get update and uh, uh, upgrade. So make sure you, everything on your installation is um, up to date. And once you're in there, what you want to do is you want to try to set up the Wi-Fi for it. So you need to edit the slash etc slash dhcpcd.conf and there you want to you want to set up a fixed IP address and then you want to set up the, the you want to edit the slash etc slash wpa underscore supplicant slash wpa underscore supplicant.conf with the proper uh, Wi-Fi credentials and here's a little thing um, that I saw uh, on how to have multiple networks. I'm also going to have this on the description because later on you might change your Wi-Fi or maybe you have different Wi-Fi um, um, networks in your in your place. You want to have just one for some devices. So this is just to show you you can have actually multiple networks set up, multiple um, Wi-Fi networks there. Uh, so once everything is set up, set up that way, you, at that point, your zero should be able to have uh, to, uh, to access your Wi-Fi network. So at that point, what you want to do is you want to uh, turn it off. Um, turn it off. Take it where it's supposed to, um, where your printers are. And that's at this point is where you want to uh, plug in your USB hub. In my case, I have multiple printers, as I said. So what I want, so I, I bought um, just a plain USB hub, plug the printers in, plug that into the USB port of the zero and um, the uh, power through you know your regular micro uh, USB cable. And at that point, the zero should fire and it should have should be part of the network and you should be able to access it via IP address. Now that you have a fixed IP address set up in it, you should be able to use uh, Putty to access it directly through IP.
best case scenario. Once that's up and running, you want to install CUPS, which is what you're going to use to um, handle printers. And at that point is where this tutorial kicks in. It's, um, as I said, it's, it's kind of straightforward. You just need to install the, the package, make sure that um, you have the proper um, permissions set up, which is why you end up doing, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this. Uh, I'm sorry, this, just in case, which are just permissions. Um, as I said, follow the, follow the different steps here and you should be good to go. And at that point, you should have your Raspberry Zero up and running in uh, your Wi-Fi network with CUPS installed. If everything went, went as it should, you should be able to access that CUPS interface via a... Um, be a web browser. So as, as you see here, the fixed IP I end up using is uh, 192.168.0.200. This is the fixed IP I set up for the um, zero. Uh, if I hit through, if I hit it through the port 631, which is the port I set up here, as you see uh, on the tutorial for cups, I should access cups directly. Um, you will be presented with this interface. And what you want to go is you want to go to the printers. And as you see here, I actually have two printers already set up. One of them is the HL2230, which is the one that we want to uh, talk about. Now, this is where we dive a little bit uh, into why we did, why we do certain things the way we do it. Um, first of all, you need to add that printer. So, there. so as you see, it's going to ask me uh, the username and password for my Pi. So I'm going to use the default ones, which is Pi and Raspberry. Click on login, and hopefully, it should take me to the app printer page. Awesome. So here, it's going to show you the different printers that are um, plugged in. So as you see here, um, it says local printer and discover network printers. You need to make sure that obviously your printer is turned on so the um, so it's being picked up by the, the server. So I'm going to give it a second. I just went in and turned it on. I'm going to give it a second and it should show up there. So as you see here, I can now see the Brother HL2230 series um, as local printer. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on continue. Uh, I'm going to leave the same name and description as it is and I'm going to click on share this printer. Click continue and now it's going to tell me, okay, what driver is that you want to use for this printer? Here you might see the drivers for the HTL2230. You see it here because that's because I tried originally to try to install the drivers that um, Brother provided. But here's the, here's the catch. Uh, the drivers that are provided on the official side of Brother for Linux are for processors that have a i386 architecture, which are your you know day-to-day -day processor, processors. Um, raspberries actually have a different architecture of processors, which is um, called ARM, A-R-M. And the drivers for i386 actually do not work for this uh, our ARM um, architecture. So there lies the main problem. That's why a lot of people, a lot of you are probably here. So what I end up doing um, is I found someone somewhere uh, that said that using the HL1250, they were able to get the printer to work. So what I did was I selected that HL1250, as you, say, as you see there on the list, and click Add Printer. I know this is not the right model for it, but here's the catch. And, and I'm going to explain this a little bit further also. But um, since my idea is I have my Windows machine and I, I want to send the, the documents to print over to the printer server, then the Windows machine is the one that needs to have the drivers for the printer. And when I add the printer to the Windows machine, as I'm going to show in a second, 
I actually tell the, the Windows what kind of um, printer this is and what driver to use. The Windows machine is the one that does the heavy lifting and does all the processing using the drivers that I already have installed. By the way, you need to have the HL2230 drivers installed on the Windows PC already. Um, and it's using the printer server as kind of a dumb terminal, if you will. Um, so the, 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 um, the wireless server doesn't do any of the processing, just, just receives the data already uh, processed and just send that over to the printer. So obviously that, that is, that's the only way I got it to work. If I would, I'm gonna set default options here as it is. It says that it was successfully um, uh, installed. And if I go here to the maintenance and uh, let's see, print a test page, this is not gonna work. And this is very important to you. A lot of people I saw on, on the forums and on, online were struggling with this part because they were like, I, I click on print test page and nothing, nothing happens. It doesn't work. And it doesn't, you, you're right about that. It didn't work for me either. Um, at least it doesn't work this way. It just doesn't work this way. So now I'm in the newly added printer. I'm here. What I want to do is I want to copy this URL. As you see here, um, it says slash printer slash the name of the printer. And this is where I'm going to go and I'm going to try to add it as a new device on Windows. So I'm going to go to the printers and scanners. Click that. Let me move this over so you can see it. Um, so I will click on add printer or scanner. This is going to take a little bit. Um, it's not going to find anything. So I'm going to go with the printer that I want isn't listed. I click there. I click on select share printer by name. I go with that. And I'm going to remove the HTTPS just in case because I don't think it's going to like it. Um, and I'm going to hit next. And now Windows is going to tell me, okay, what driver you want to use? So it can tell us a brother one, or maybe, maybe it can't, I don't know. Um, I already have the drivers installed on my computer because I had that printer, um, connected to my, to my Windows computer before. So I'm going to look for the HL2230 and I'm going to hit okay. And there you go. It, now it's installed, hit next. And now if I click on print a test page, it is actually going to print. And there you go. That's, that's how I got it to work. All right, guys. Um, I hope this was useful for anyone. All right. Peace. Take care. Bye-bye.